10 Python basics you should know. Before this video, I honestly could only tell 8 without googling. Let me know in the comments if you can beat this. 1. How to remove elements from a list while looping over it. First, let me show you what not to do. Never loop over a list and remove elements at the same time. This will lead to errors. In this example, we loop over a list and want to remove all even numbers. For this, we have a little helper function to determine if the number is even or not. Notice that the final result still has a 2 in it, so this is not correct. The mistake in this code is that we removed the element while looping over it, so then all elements got shifted one place to the left and as a result we skipped one iteration. The correct way to do this is to loop over a copy of the list. Notice the tiny difference here. This is called list slicing, so with this syntax we create a copy of the list and can therefore modify the original list. Another option is to just create a copy and put in all elements that do not meet the condition, we can do this in one line with the list comprehension syntax. Now notice another tiny change that makes the copy process a little bit more efficient. With this syntax we assign the values to the slice of A and therefore modify the list in place. The result is the same but it's a little bit faster than assigning to the whole list. The last option is to use filter faults from iter tools. The approach is the same but here we don't have to write the list comprehension ourselves. Also, the iter tools functions are very efficient, so this is another good option you can keep in mind. 2. What does if name equals equals main mean? If you test functions or other code from your script in the same file, it's good practice to put everything in a if name equals equals main guard statement. This makes a difference for these two cases. We run it as the main program with python filename.py or we import the file in another file with import filename. When the Python interpreter reads a source file, it does two things. First, it sets a few special variables like this d under name, and then it executes all the code it finds in the file. So now if you run the file with python foo.py, the Python interpreter sets the d under name variable as d under main. So this part is executed and function a is called. If we now have another file, bar.py, where we import foo, and now we run this file with python bar.py, then this file is our d under main, and the foo file has the name foo. So this will just execute the code part from our bar file. However, let's say we forgot the guard statement. Now if we run bar.py again, it also executes all the code in foo.py when we import it. So we see another print statement. Usually this is not what we wanted, so it's recommended to keep the guard statement in your files when running code. 3. How to check if a file or directory exists. First of all, instead of checking if the file exists, it's perfectly fine to directly open it and wrap everything in a try except block. This strategy is also known as easier to ask for forgiveness than permission and is a perfectly accepted Python coding style. If you don't want to raise an exception or you don't even need to open a file and just need to check if it exists, you have different options. The first way is using the different methods in os.path. isFile returns true for a valid file, isDir returns true for a valid directory and exists returns true for a valid file or directory. Starting with Python 3.4, you can also use the pathlib module. It offers an object-oriented approach to work with file system paths, and this is now my preferred way of dealing with files and directories. You can create a path object like this, and now you can use the different methods isFile, isDir, and exists on the path object. 4. How to find the index of an item in a list. To find the index, you can simply use mylist.index. It returns a zero-based index in the list of the first item whose value is equal to x. If there is no such item, it raises a value error. So in order to deal with possible exceptions, you can wrap everything in a try except block and for example assign minus 1 to the index in case it's not there. Notice also that it only returns one index of the first match, so if there are multiple items of the same value and you want to get all indices, then you can do this with list comprehension where you loop over the whole list. 5. How to execute a program or system command from Python. To run a command, use the subprocess module in the standard library and call subprocess.run. 
Note that the command argument must be a list of strings and not one single string with the whole command. Another option is to use os.system. This takes one single string as argument. However, subprocess.run is more powerful and even the official documentation recommends to use subprocess over os.system. To execute a child program in a new process, use subprocess.popen. Here again, you must pass in a list of strings. 6. How to merge two dictionaries. Python dictionaries have a dot update other function that updates the dictionary with the key value pairs from other overriding existing keys. This however modifies the original dictionary in place instead of returning a new one. To create a new dictionary with the merged key value pairs you can use different methods depending on which Python version you use. Since Python 3.9 you can use the need syntax with a single vertical bar or pipe sign. Since Python 3.5, you can also use this syntax, which is known as dictionary unpacking. And for lower versions, you have to create a copy of one dictionary and then call the update function with the other one. 7. How to create a nested directory. Since Python 3.5, the best and easiest way to create a nested directory is by using pathlib path make dir. By setting parents to true, any missing directories are created as needed. And by setting exists ok to true, an exception will be ignored if the file already exists. Otherwise, a file exists error is thrown. For older Python versions, os path make dirs can be used together with os path exists. But if you have a version of 3.5 or newer, the recommended way now is to use the pathlib module. 8. What's the difference between class method and static method? In Python, you will find some methods decorated with addStaticMethod or addClassMethod, but what exactly will they do? Let's look at an example to show the difference. We can create an instance of a software engineer and now we can call the class method on the instance or on the class itself. The same is true for the static method. We can call it on the instance or on the class. This means that for these two methods, we don't even need to create an instance. Now notice that the class method gets the class as first argument, but when calling the function, we don't pass it in. This is done for us similar to the self argument in instance methods. Since we have the class argument, inside a class method, we know about class variables. So in this example, we can access class.alias. On the other hand, in the static method, we neither have information about self nor about the class, so essentially, we could just use a global function for this, like so. So you might ask why use a static method at all then, and not just use a global function. And yeah, you could do that, but sometimes it makes sense to put code into a class as add static method, because it logically belongs with the class. So when calling it, we immediately see that it belongs to software engineer, because we always have to type software engineer before it. In the programming language, this is also known as namespace. 9. What's the difference between the str and the wrapper method in Python? Both are special methods, also known as the under methods, that return strings. For built-in classes, these two methods are already implemented and it's good practice to implement them ourselves when creating a custom class. But what's the difference? When I summarize the official documentation, these rules apply. Wrapper is the official string representation, it should be unambiguous. Str is the informal string representation and should be human readable. Wrapper is also a fallback for str if str is missing and calling print uses str. So a good rule of thumb here is wrapper is for developers and str is for customers. So if we have a look at another example of the built-in daytime object, we see that by printing it we use str and it displays the daytime object in a clean date string, while when using wrapper it also shows information about the module. 10. How to concatenate two lists. The simplest way to combine two lists is by just using the plus operator. Another alternative worth mentioning is this syntax that we can use since Python 3.5. This is a more general way to unpack and combine items. For example, if B is a tuple, for the plus operator we get an error because we can't use the plus for a list and a tuple. However, the unpacking syntax works for different types of iterables, so this is fine here. 
One more thing worth mentioning is that both ways only create a shallow copy. This means that the copy is one level deep. Modifying on level 1 does not affect the other list, so we won't notice a difference in this code. But with nested objects, modifying on level 2 or deeper does affect the other. In this example, we have a nested list. After creating a new list C, we modify an inner item of A and notice that C now has the same modification too. I have a whole tutorial about shallow versus deep copying if you want to learn more about this. Alright and now that's it. I hope you enjoyed these basics and if so then please hit like and consider subscribing and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!